few weeks ago when we learned about repetitions, we created an application that allowed us to do a thousand rolls of a pair of dice and keep track of those and see the results in a simulated bar chart. We used quite a few variables in creating that. Today I want to revisit that code and show you another way to do that project using arrays that will reduce the amount of code in that project. So if we look at the code previously, everything was happening in a button script and we had a bunch of variables here for total 2, 3, 4, down through total 12. And then we also used a switch statement to increment those variables based on what the row was. And then we used several lines to output our values to 11 different text boxes as well as create the width of those 11 different bars. So we're going to use this doing arrays and make this a little bit simpler. So I'm going to come back up to my code. We're still going to need our three variables of die 1, die 2, and total. But what I'm going to do is create an integer array. I'm just going to call it rolls. And it's going to equal a new int. I'm going to size this array at 13 so I get values from 0 to 12. Now we're not going to use the 0 or the 1 ind indices. Those just remain blank. But as we update this, we'll be able to add to the 2 through 12 items of this array. Still need my semicolon. And then we use a little for loop. We use a counter of i equal to 0 and i being less than rolls.length. And we'll increment i. In this loop, I'm just going to set the values of rolls to 0. So roll sub i equals 0. All right, I can then get rid of all of these. I no longer need those. I'm still using the random number generator. I'm going to go through my loop a thousand times. I'm going to ge randomly generate the value for die 1, die 2, and then calculate the total. And we'll add this to our list, our LST rolls.items.add like we did before. I'm going to get rid of the switch statement. No longer going to need that. I'm just going to delete that. And instead, what we're going to do in our loop is based on the total, we're going to increment rolls. So rolls, I'm going to take the value of total as my index number and just say plus equals 1. So I replace that whole switch statement basically with one line of code because of the array. Having done that, I want to put the values into LBL. 2 through 12. And I could say instead of total 2, I could change this to roll sub 2. What I want to do instead is create uh, an array of my objects. In the previous video, we looked at how to create object arrays. This is going to be, I'm going to create an, a, an array of labels. So label, I'm just going to call it my labels equals, and I'm going to go ahead and hard code these in. So because I'm going to have two that I don't really want to use, I'm going to put label two three times. We're going to ignore the first couple, but these need to be actual labels. So I'm going to start with that third one, which is my index two, is label two, and then LBL three, LBL four, LBL five, LBL. Six. I'm going to drop down the next line, and we'll have LBL7, LBL8, LBL9, LBL10, LBL11, and LBL12. So I have 13 elements there. Again, the first two we're going to ignore. LBL2 happens to occur three times. I'm going to do the same thing for my bars. So I have another label array. I'm going to call this one my bars equals. 
And we have LBL bar two. And again, I'm gonna do this one three times. I'm gonna ignore the first two. LBL bar three, LBL bar four, LBL bar five. And finally, LBL bar 12. Now having those two object arrays, I can get rid of this code and replace it with a for loop. We'll do four. Again, I'm going to use i as my counter, int i equals, in this case, we're going to say 2, and we're going to do i less than my labels dot length, and we'll increment i. And now through the loop, we're simply going to say my label. sub i equals rolls sub i. And I'm getting a little error here because I really want to change the text value of those labels, not the label themselves. And I need to take the rolls sub i and convert that to a string. There we go. And then we're going to set my bars sub i dot, we're going to change the width property here to simply equal rolls. So we significantly reduced the amount of code in our project, actually made it much more efficient. If we wanted to change this to utilize maybe three dice or four dice, we wouldn't have to change a lot and our code wouldn't become very much longer. I do have a little uh, red squiggly here. And that's because I put a comma rather than a semicolon in my loop. I'm going to fix that. That goes away. But now there is our just our code. It's a very small amount of code, much more efficient and more extensible. Let's test this and see if it worked. Oh, I got a build error. And the build error is I'm missing a curly bracket. So somewhere along the way, I accidentally erased a curly bracket. I'm going to fix that. And we'll start again. And there is my dice rolls. So 7 camp 191 91 times, 159 times, 167 times. Everything seems to be working. And that is how arrays can make our code more efficient.